welcome to my channel um i just want to start off by saying thank you i have received a ton of kind messages from each and every one of you if you guys kind of are not sure what's happening my budgie kiwi she was seven years old and unfortunately she became egg bound and she passed away um yeah that's essentially what has happened um i could maybe do another video on exactly the process of it but basically she was at the emergency vet um it was kind of like a drop a uh, drop off case where i dropped off kiwi and i don't i didn't really know when she was gonna get seen but because i'm a veterinary assistant i kind of know how it works she was an emergency case most likely she was first seen i received when i dropped her off the veterinarian called me literally within 30 seconds so i know she was seen immediately um and unfortunately she passed away um even with the supportive care even when the egg was out and it was a healthy egg and i'm gonna get to that in a minute what i mean by that she had a ton of internal bleeding and hemorrhaging which was actually the cause of her death she basically i guess in human terms coded or like had a cardiac arrest and she wasn't able to wake up um she was under anesthesia um so yeah basically i want to just get ahead and i kind of wanted to do this video because i think i've never done it and it has kind of been a rough road but i want to talk about it a little bit so before i start the video i do want to say if somehow you have a bird typically affect budgies finches cockatiels hens even lizards um that is egg bound Take your bird to an avian veterinarian, an emergency clinic, an exotic veterinarian, even a regular veterinarian will do because they could give pain management and supportive care. And I can't do that on a video. Like there's nothing I could do then until you see them maybe keep them warm. Um, that's about it. I'm not going to give any medical advice per se. Um, I will get into prevention but we know how that ended up uh, even with all the right environment kiwi still ended up being egg bound but again i still want to make this video i still want to give those advices to those people and hopefully it could help someone so yeah if you do have an emergency case this isn't the video for you please take your bird to the vet so before i start i want to talk about what actually egg bound is egg bound is pretty much the egg getting stuck um in simple terminology, it's just an egg getting stuck. It cannot pass through the canal. Um, now, all, every animal's uh, anatomy is different, obviously. There are reasons as to why it gets stuck. So, yeah, I just want to now start and talk about the causes of what egg bounding or what causes egg bounding. So, basically, there is a bit of a list when it comes to egg bounding, I'm gonna try my best to mention most or the more common reasons. Obviously, I can't get to the nitty and gritty and all the tiny details. So yeah, one of the causes is age. Believe it or not, a very young bird or obviously in Kiwi's case, a very old bird could become egg bound. Another thing people confuse is that they might have a bird who's laying eggs consistently uh, consistently and all of a sudden they become egg bound the reason is again a bird is not going to be able to lay eggs up until they're like very old in age in like budgie world seven year old for an egg laying female is actually pretty old i know a lot of people with budgies they want to say seven years is young not for egg laying okay most breeders um that do um breed their birds in budgies they will actually retire the hen at age three if it's a male uh they will retire the male at age four um so it's not really going past that i've even heard veterinary um breeders that will not go past age two with hens so in that term i guess yes kiwi was a very old bird especially a bird who's never laid egg um so it, that's a main factor age is actually a very important factor and that is also a very um, possible cause as to why your bird may be egg bound number two the way the egg is shaped I know this is not often talked about but the egg might be shaped weird also the egg might not be calcified so this could also happen again with birds who have been laying especially with cockatiels they might be laying eggs so much so and after a while their uh, human owners i guess would notice that the egg is shaped weird 
And what I mean by that is that you need calcium for a healthy egg formation. In Kiwi's case, the egg was formed in a healthy way. She just had hemorrhaging, but basically the egg becomes a bit spongy. You could even like veterinarians might even like touch it. It's like a very gooey mess. And this again brings to the issue of it might not be passing properly also the egg might be kind of not twisted but it might just be coming off in a very awkward manner so the cloaca or the vent however you want to go by it it's just it's not passing through properly and that could be a reason why the egg is either shaped weird or the anatomy of the animal is not really i guess a hundred percent typical Every anatomy is different even with humans, so it just might not be coming out properly. Now the third cause as to why your bird might be egg bound, and this is a major factor, believe it or not, is if they have a bad diet. So an example of a bad diet is 100% sea diet. I think most bird owners will agree 100% sea diet is just not good for them. Um, and my suggestion is vegetables, a little bit of seeds here and there and pellets. Believe it or not, I do give my birds seeds. <laughs> I don't know why that surprises some people. I know a lot of people in the bird community that give like this much, not a whole millet, but this much of millet every day. I give my birds seeds every day and maybe millet once like every two, two weeks or so. The amount of seeds they were getting every day was less than my fingernail and I have small hands. It was one fourth of a teaspoon. That was because I found that that little bit of seed would help them keep their um, weight. My birds are flying inside their bird room for over eight hours and just on a veggie and pellet diet, I did notice that their weight sometimes would go a bit lower than what I would consider okay. It wasn't like extremely underweight or anything, but um, I would prefer it at a different range. So my vets already know this, so it's nothing like out of the ordinary. Um, and I make my own seeds, um, not like actually produce my own seeds, but my own seed mixes. So they're all homemade and stuff. So I did give them seeds, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like a chunk of seeds and no veggies no kale no pellets and i could talk about pellets in a different video but if you at least have the veggie component the pellets i do think it's great but not everyone not everyone is in north america and not everyone it's not even affordability not everyone has that available so at least get the veggie i know in your country unless you're in uh, north korea most of us will have kale Okay, most of us will have spinach, zucchini, give it to your birds. Even if, like typically I would suggest six, seven, uh, six or seven vegetables, green, dark, leafy greens, um, and like a few extras. Um, but if you don't have that, even two, three, four vegetables a day, it's important. Just make it, put it in the freezer, all that jazz. Kiwi had all of that. I do want to get that out there. Kiwi had... She was on top pellets because of COVID reasons. Sometimes she was on Harrison's. There's just two nitpicking details between tops and Harrison's. I could talk about that in another video. It's not that really serious, guys. It's it, whatever. She was on a healthy diet. I, that's what I want to say. Number four, if they have actually a sedentary lifestyle. So what I mean by that is if your bird is not active at all. So typically, minimum, most bird owners will say at least have your bird outside their cage for two to three hours so imagine someone who's inside their home every single time that's me but like you will get large like me so the problem with a sedentary lifestyle this is not supposed to be funny but the problem with a sedentary lifestyle is that your bird could become obese and again with obesity egg laying could be an issue just like with humans if you are someone who is larger being pregnant is a bit more riskier so uh take that into consideration if your bird has a sedentary lifestyle um that could cause actually egg binding the fifth reason is not necessarily a cause but it could be a reason as to why your bird might be egg bound it's because of their species so just to name three like finches cockatiels and budgies obviously um they are more prone to being egg bound now i could talk about the reasons as to why i mean some budgies especially they're like a lot of them are genetically played around because of 
breeders and show budgets, blah, 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 the list goes on. But I also feel like when people purchase birds, budgies, finches, cockatiels, the name again, a few, they're they are a bit more easily purchasable from the pet store their cages are a bit more cheaper their ties also tends to be cheaply made and they're not given sufficient care and some people might be like oh you're just saying that because they're budgies or they're smaller animals unfortunately not everyone has the same knowledge because take this for instance you will be like you will likely see a 15 year old with a budgie compared to a 15 year old with like a 3000 macaw and like a 2000 big cage for them right so they are more likely this is again it could be human error <laughs> to be honest they are more likely to get a proper diet compared to smaller birds because i feel like smaller species tend to get abused in that sense a bit more to be honest so there's that therefore i feel like the reasoning behind that is that could be because of humans to be honest don't hate me for it that's just my two cents on it the sixth reason I'm gonna give is if they are hormonal. Now, this is I feel like the main reason that it happened to Kiwi to be honest. And it's harder to prevent than you think. But if they are hormonal, there are things that you could stop to kind of making it live, uh, reach that peak to the point where they want to even lay eggs. To prevent birds to be completely not hormonal, it's just impossible. But you can do stuff to either shorten that hormonal stage and again not take it to the point where they do want to lay eggs so again an example of this let's say if they're hormonal it's springtime daylight hours are very long and then you decide to give them a toy that i guess they shredded so much so that they're starting to make nests out of it so consider that that can be a cause so certain stages or seasons certain toys i would definitely not put a nest box or even something like kind of like i know some people put like sleeping huts don't do that um but if they are adamant they could still lay an egg like muffin did lay an egg inside her food bowl but again i can't prevent a food bowl my veterinarian even told me my actual veterinarian my avian veterinarian told me that um stainless steel they're kind of reflective and if your bird is hormonal because of the reflection of the stainless steel they could lay an egg Believe it or not so i have actually heard some people although stainless steel is perfect because their bird was so hormonal and they were very prone to laying eggs they actually went back to plastic and most people would suggest not using plastic because it could harbor bacteria and stuff but they actually switched it out for the benefit of their bird so consider your cage arrangement your toys again if it's stainless steel if you might need to go back to plastic so that's another reason why if your bird is hormonal and the conditions are right enough for them to lay an egg and then for whatever reason with the other list i gave they might just be egg bound so i'm gonna list the symptoms right now um for an egg bound bird i will say birds are very good at hiding their symptoms and i'll take kiwi as a very good example on a saturday is when i decided to do a photo shoot i will actually insert the photos right now right here over here so you guys could see not in a million years when i was taking these pictures and i'm gonna show you guys a slideshow did i think my budgie was egg bound or she had an egg inside her until the end of the photo shoot and i'll tell you what happened we were taking photos she was happy she was lively she was eating well there was no issues whatsoever until I decided once we were done with the photo shoot, I'll kind of, Kiwi stays on her back. I, ha I have videos on it. She's very tame. So I, I had her flipped over and this is where the symptom aspect comes into play is that her abdomen was swollen. So some, this is when I noticed it. It was like the really, it was close to the vent. So abdomen being swollen. She also, because she was egg bound, I think, um, there could be reasons as to why they do this but either pain was the reason why because she couldn't get the egg out so she plucked out her feathers but i've also heard budgies or hens whatever plucking out their feathers to kind of prepare for the nest box so it could become more cushioned for the chicks there could be reasons as to why but those are the two possible symptoms the other thing is lameness if that egg is pushing on their leg uh, because it's really close to the uh, lower extremities they might actually present what lameness so they might not be leaning on one leg as much as the other 
Few other symptoms are if they have rapid or labored breathing. Kiwi did not actually present those symptoms, but some birds will actually present those. They might be very distressed because this egg isn't coming out and they could be, you know, in quite a bit of pain. Constipation could also be another symptom. I mean, it kind of makes sense. The egg would be blocking the entrance, so fecal matter would not be able to pass. So they will most likely not be... Actually, you won't really see if they're egg bound and it's really blocking the entrance. You won't really see them passing fecal matter. Like at the stage when I saw Kiwi, she was not passing obviously fecal matter because it was completely blocking her entrance. Nothing was coming out other than pulling out blood, which is quite sad actually. A few other symptoms could be if they have lost their appetite, um, if they're not eating, not drinking. It's kind of hard to tell if they're drinking because. Some bird owners will come up to me being like, I haven't seen my bird drink, and I'm like, that's very normal actually. I don't know why. Most people can't really catch their bird sometimes drinking. I have seen all my birds obviously drink water. It's a bit more harder to, I guess, catch. If that makes any sense. But yeah, if they are not eating their pellets, their veggies, then obviously if you're, you should be obviously changing their food every single day, their water dish every single day, you will notice, not really with water because you fill it up, but like, especially if they're not eating like their pellets, their veggies, even if you give them a seed diet, which again, I'm not an advocate for, if you notice they're not even eating their seeds, that could be a reason why. Also, if they're perching down low, very low, this is a common symptom regardless if they're egg bound or not, birds being down at the bottom of their cage, it's not normal at all, so that. I have something here that could be a reason for them to be egg bound also if they are perching someplace high up doesn't really matter what perch whatever um and they're not moving like they're just not moving you'll also notice birds actually kind of losing heat so this actually did happen with kiwi where she i'm assuming she lost quite a bit of heat by trying to strain so she was actually very puffed up and um that, that's quite sad actually so but th that could be a possible symptom as well now we've come to prevention now um obviously you want to give them a healthy diet you want to give them adequate time outside their cage you want to make sure if they're hormonal not to kind of um trigger them i guess even more by putting like a sleeping hut in there or having dark corners or having them display breeding behavior or mating behavior or eggling behavior you kind of want to limit that as much as possible also day late hours um you don't want to give them i guess like long hours if they are presenting hormonal behavior um there are ways to kind of limit their daylight time. You could even put something on their cage as a cover. Those are some stuff that could help. Also being on a pelleted diet, a veggie diet. Did I mention that? Diet is very important. Um, those are some of the reasons why. Uh, some of the reasons that can help you guys to prevent egg laying. So with all those that I have mentioned, what happens if they still lay an egg like kiwi? She had good diet, she had a vegetable, very healthy, mixed diet, she had pellets, she had the occasional seeds every day, just a tiny bit guys, it's, it's not that alarming, um, she had very adequate exercise, well over 8 hours a day, in winter time I have been very clear to keep their daylight hours, even when it's summertime, keep it at a very healthy level so she doesn't lay an egg. Um, she had toys but nothing like sleeping huts and stuff. So what happens with all of that and they still, and they are a mature bird or even a young bird and they still decide to lay an egg, what do you do? Treatment. Take it to a veterinarian. I'm not going to come here and say, okay guys, you could gently squeeze it out. I have seen some people on YouTube to actually be able to do that. This is this is a very a very skilled person could do this in no way in a million years would i ever think to hold kiwi upside down and push it out um, and you can't just do it like in the like you might see a 10 minute video it doesn't happen in 10 minutes most people who are even doing this manually that don't have any sort of a lot of breeders would actually do this and they're filming just in case like people are in that emergency situation and they cannot go to the vet and you know your bird's just gonna die in like two hours well i hate saying this but you might as well maybe i guess some people's uh, top process is you might as well try it because they're still gonna die in two hours they might have that 50 50 even if it's a one percent chance 
most people, me included, would actually take that 1%. They will manually lubricate the area or gently push it out. This, again, could take anywhere from like 45 minutes to like 2 hours or so. Um, in a veterinarian clinic, they will actually... <clears throat> Like we put them in an incubator with the help of the heat, the hope was that she passes it. That actually doesn't happen. Uh, so some birds might be able to pass their egg in an incubator. Um, because it's very mo warm in there, very moist, very humid, so they could easily pass it out. And some instances, like I said, the veterinarian will actually manually do it. They are trained to do this. I am not trained. Most people who do this manually that you see on a YouTube video, some are doctors or veterinarians, whatever. Some are not. So take that with a grain of salt. Of obviously, I had my veterinarian do that. She did not pass it manually. So the next step was, and it's very stressful to not put a bird under anesthesia and do that because they're in pain, most likely, and they're fidgeting. So obviously, immediately right after that, she was put it under anesthesia, um, and your bird might be put under anesthesia it's just a gas inhaler whatever they're quickly down it's easier to help them and they might push manually again push out the egg the thing is sometimes even then it doesn't come out so what doctors will do is that they'll put it like a syringe and they'll suck out the um, egg material if that makes sense and they'll pretty much use fluids and stuff and take out all the gunk because at this point the egg um, becomes deflated once they suck out the yolk, uh, the yolk of the egg and like the white parts and stuff. So they might be able to do that. Now in Kiwi's case, as I have mentioned, the egg came out under anesthesia, but because um, she was in the situation that she was, I guess she was straining a lot. She had a lot of bleeding and hemorrhaging, and when the doctor, um, veterinarian, whatever, was able to push out the egg, Kiwi had gushing of hemorrhaging. And she had a lot of blood clots. So blood would, the way blood clots work is that RBC, once it sits in a while, your human, just like with humans, it the way it works is that they say, okay, that's dangerous, let's clot it to stop it. But regardless, anyway, besides the point, she didn't wake up from the anesthesia. This wasn't because of the anesthesia, so I don't want people to be scared if they are taking their bird to a veterinarian and they're like, we have to put it under anesthesia to remove this. This was not in my case because of the anesthesia. The veterinarian did tell me she didn't pass away because of the anesthesia. She passed away because of all the blood. And it makes sense, even when I was in the process of taking her, even with the egg being so stuck, you were able to see like a droplet of pooling blood. It actually even dropped on top of her carrier, because like, just like a water droplet, it dropped down. So I, I knew that was, that she lost even that little bit of blood might not seem a lot, but in Kiwi's case, she lost a lot of blood, so... She didn't wake up. Like, there wasn't a moment where she woke up and then she started continuously bleeding and she passed away. The way I processed the way my veterinarian explained it to me is that when she said it isn't because of the anesthesia, that she never even woke up from it. So, she just pretty much had a cardiac arrest then and there and she passed away. So, yeah. I didn't want this to become a dark video. I want it, I want it to become very educational for you guys and I'm really hoping it helps and... It's not because I'm in a bright mood, but um, I guess there's not much I could do about it. I did, I do miss her, and I've given her all the best care I could possibly think about. The thing is, I've never, like I said, in a million years, I've done something correct, where in seven years, she's not laid an egg, and I don't know or I could possibly give reasons as to why. After seven years, she decided this is the day, I'm gonna lay an egg and that's why she passed away so there's that um I hope this video was somewhat educational I hope that maybe if your bird did pass away from it um sometimes there's not really much you could do about it um but these are symptoms and prevention treatments that I wanted to give people to kind of look out for so yeah um I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, thank you a lot. I've had a lot of kind people um, giving me kind of kind comments on it. I do want to show something. Look what I made. It was in honor of Kiwi. Um, yeah, I hope this video was informative, guys. Thank you for listening to me.
Have a nice day, guys. Bye-bye.